Hello and welcome to a video from filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with the K. I'm Chris with the K. Today we're going to create a very simple video game using Godot version 4.3. Godot is a great open source game engine, very easy to use, very lightweight, and is just spectacular. Uh, you can get Godot if you don't already have it at godotengine.org. And it's spelt, Godot is spelt G O D O T, like Godot engine.org. Download, and again, I'm working with version 4.3 here, so you'll want to get that if you're going to follow along with this tutorial. We're going to use assets from Kenny, that's kenny.nl. There's lots of game assets, both 2D and 3D here you can get that are free to use. Uh, also some sounds. Uh, I've already downloaded them. So to get the starter game, so I've already downloaded some graphics and sounds, go to my website. There should be a link in the description, but filmsbychris.com forward slash scripts forward slash 2024. And there's a mouse underscore games dot zip. Go ahead and download that. Once you have it downloaded, open up Godot. This is what you'll see. We're going to say import and then just navigate to wherever you downloaded that zip file from. Choose that zip file and click open. You'll get this and then just click import and edit. Give it a moment to extract everything and load up. And then once it does, we have this basic setup here. You can see that we have some sounds and images that I've already set up for you. Let's go ahead and start creating our 2D game here. Let's go ahead and create a 2D scene and we're gonna call it Map 01 that because it's gonna be our first level. Now, I like uh, for most of my games a black background. We're gonna go up to projects and change some project settings. You can change the name of your game here to whatever you'd like and you can also change the icon. I already have a little mouse icon set up for you. Let's go ahead and first let's go to Window and resize this. Uh, we're just going to do 720 by 480 for our resolution. And I, get, I like my games just to go full screen. If you're going to play a video game, <laughs> why wouldn't you play it full screen? Once we have that set, the only th thing we're going to change in here is uh, stretch mode. Let's go ahead and just set this to viewport. Okay, so we changed the resolution, made it full screen, and set the viewport. Now let's go down and we're looking for environment and we're going to change the default color uh, clear color and I'm just gonna make it black I just think that looks good so one or two other things we're going to change in here later on but let's go ahead and just close for right now so we have a blank canvas to work with here we're going to say uh, we're going to right click on our map object here add a child and we'll type in tile and what we're going to want is tile map layer not ma tile map but tile map layer create that with it selected we're going to come over here to the right where it says tile set where it says empty, we will click that and click new tile set. Now we can click on where it says tile set. Right away, we're gonna to wanna to add some physics to this because we want our player to be able to collide with it, right? So we're gonna add an element. Here we have collision layer and collision mask. Collision layer is the layer that this object is on. Collision mask is the things it's going to collide with. Let's go ahead, something you don't have to do but is helpful because right now they're just numbered. If we click these three dots here, we can say edit layer names. And I'm gonna set up, give names to some of these layers. I'm gonna say players for layer one, map for player or for layer two, and I'll say collectibles for layer three. Those are gonna be coins or any other bonuses you can pick up. I'm gonna go ahead and hit close now. And that's just for your reference. When you hover over these now, they'll tell you what layer it is by name so you can keep things organized. But since this is our map, we're going to have it set on two. So our, our tile set is on two and it's gonna collide with one and three. Uh, so now that we have that, we will center click. So click on your mouse wheel, drag around and then scroll to zoom in a little bit. Now we have again our tile set selected. So we have this down here and we have down here, we have options. These last two were on tile map and tile set. We wanna to go to tile set. And then in our little tree here, we're gonna to go to objects and mouse. That's just where I have the one whole tile that has all the graphics for this game in one thing. Uh, sometimes I would divide these out, but it's just, this is a very small game we're working with. We're just gonna drag this monochrome tile set. We're just gonna create a basic little black and white game, a little pixel game. And we will click yes to uh, uh, create tiles in the Atlas. And now we can zoom in here and you can see all the different things. So I'm just scrolling to zoom. We have these different tiles. Uh, from our map to other objects and our mouse here that was going to be our main player. Let's go ahead and select this tile right here, this little ground tile. Uh, we can scroll through here. Let's actually click select, select it again. And now we'll go down to physics, physics layer zero. And in here, you can see that tile that we have selected. So whichever tile we have selected, we want to set up 
what parts of this our player can collide with, because we don't want them colliding with the empty spot here. So we're first going to turn on our grid. So you see the little magnet here? We're going to click that, and we're going to grid snap. And now we can see our grid. Press the green icon here, and we're just going to draw over this top part here a little rectangle. That is what our player will collide with. At this point, let's go ahead and hit Control S to save and put this under Scenes. I have a folder created for you called Scenes. We're just going to save it as Map01. Save. Perfect. Let's click on our uh, tile map layer again. And now we're going to, again, choose that same icon that we just, or same tile that we just set collision for. And you can see if we have the little pencil selected here, we can start drawing our map. But if I zoom in here, you can see it looks a little blurry. See, we're working with pixel art, so we need to tell Godot that we're working with pixel art. So it doesn't look blurry like that. It's trying to smooth the edges. With pixel art, you don't want that. We're going to go to Project Settings. And in here, we're just going to look for tile. Now, there's a little filter here. We can type in, or not tile, but textures. Texture. So I'll just type in text, and we can see render texture. And then here, where it says canvas texture, and we have default texture filter, we're going to set this to nearest. We're going to hit close, and already you can see it's not blurry anymore. Nice straight pixels. We're drawing our map here. If we hit F5, it will start the game, but it needs to know what our default scene is. Currently, we just have one scene, our map. We're going to say select the current scene. So from here on out, it will start by loading this map. Do that, and this is our map. You can see our tile is up. Our map is up here in the top left. We can close this. Uh, with Alt F4 on a lot of systems or Windows Q depending on how your system is set up. And um, this is our viewport, this purple or this blue box here. We're not going to use that. We're going to add a camera. So click on our map one, right click it, say add child and type in camera. And we want the camera 2D, not the camera 3D, the camera 2D because we're making a 2D game. And there you can see it's right there. This purple one is our camera. It's kind of zoomed out, so with the camera selected over here on the right, we're going to change this to 2, and now we're zoomed in even more. And if we hit F5, there is our map. We can, with our camera selected, click the little uh, red uh, cross in the middle here, and we'll drag that up. Let's go ahead and select our tile map again, and with that same tile selected and the pencil, and we can scroll to zoom in, we'll draw a little bit more of our map. You left click to draw and right click if you want to erase something. There's other options, fill buckets and stuff like that uh, down here. We're not going to mess with that too much. Let's go ahead, draw another little platform here, little platform here, and maybe another one right here. Okay, if we hit F5, we can see what that looks like. Great. Again, Alt F4 to close your window or whatever key combination because we haven't set, we're going full screen, but we haven't set an exit key yet. Uh, we'll worry about that later on. For right now, let's go ahead and add in another object. So we press the little plus sign, and here we're not going to choose one of these. We're going to choose other node, and we're going to type in character. And we have a character body 2D. We will select that. We'll click it to rename it. We'll just call it player. You'll see a little yellow exclamation mark here, warning of some things. Don't worry about that just yet. Let's go ahead and center click and scroll to zoom in a little bit. Let's add in our graphics for our player. So we're going to right click and say add child and we're going to type in sprite. Sprite. And we're going to choose there's sprite 2D and animated sprite 2D. Depending on what you do you may want to choose the other. We're going to go animated sprite 2D. More complicated games I might go with a sprite 2D and animate it a different way. But let's go ahead and just choose that and click here just to shorten it up. I'm just going to call it sprite. At this point with the sprite selected we can come over here to animation and you can see sprite frames. Click on this and say new sprite frames. Now we click on where we have the sprite frames there and we have our default set here. What we want to do now is choose this little grid icon. Now we need to find our graphics. For this project under objects mouse we have the monochrome tile map which has all our graphics. We will choose that and it shows everything and we need to divide this up for so each item is in its own little box. This particular graphic is each box, each tile is 16 by 16. So over here where it says size we want to change that to 16 by 16. Now you can see our grid. In here we want to hit control and scroll 
to zoom in. And for our idle app, our default animation, our idle animation, I think we're going to choose these four little animation frames here. Once you have them selected in that order, 0, 1, 2, 3, and you can change that later on if you want, we'll click Add Frames. Now we have our little graphic there. At this point, we can add uh, collision detection. So with our player here, we'll, we'll right click on player, say Add Child, and we'll type in Collision, and we want a collision shape 2D. We'll choose that, click Create. Well, exclamation mark next to that because we need to set a shape. So over here to the right, we have shape. We're going to click where it says empty. I'm sorry, click the drop down here. Yeah. And we're going to change this to whatever shape fits what we're doing. Most time characters, you're going to want uh, a capsule. This guy's kind of round. We could use a circle, but I'm going to go capsule. At this point, this is where he's going to collide with anything else in the game. So we want to make our collision mainly to his body. We want to make sure this bottom dot is lined up with the bottom of his feet. And we don't care if his ears hit anything, but we don't want his body going through anything. Uh, so now we have that set. We will hit Control S and decide where to save this. We'll go up and into Objects, Mouse, and we'll just leave this named as Player.TSCN. Save. Now we could add him to our scene, but he has no programming yet. So let's go ahead and right click on Player and we'll attach a script. Since we chose a character 2D for this, it asks, do you want to use the character 2D uh, template? And although in a more advanced game, I would completely rewrite all this, it is a good way to start. So we're just gonna click Create. And this is our script. We'll hit Control S to save. And if we come back up to this tab here and go to our map and choose 2D, and then in our tree over here, we can go to Resources, Objects, Mouse, and we have our player, not the GD, but the TSCN, that's our scene, our player object. We will put him right there. So there's our mouse. And if we hit F5, we can now use, oh, forgot to tell him what to collide into. <laughs> uh, so go ahead and close our window here. Go back to our player tab here. And with our player selected, we're gonna come over here to collision, not this collision up here, but this collision right here. And he is going to be on one and he's gonna collide with two and three. Now, if we hit F5, there we go. Now he's colliding with the ground. We can use left and right arrow to move him and space to jump. He is kind of moving kind of fast. So let's go ahead and adjust this. And I also would like him to jump a little bit lower because we might give him a double jump later on. So let's go back here after closing our game window. We're going to choose our script here and we're going to change his speed to 150 and his jump velocity to negative 300. If we hit F5 now, I can run space to jump there. Oh, we might need to make this platform a little bit longer until we actually add our double jump in. So let's go back to map, choose our tile set here, go to 2D. Make sure we have that tile selected and it's on draw. And there we go. So now we'll hit F5 and our character will jump like so. He's not animated though, right? We gave him an animation, a idle animation, but it's not working. Let's go ahead and close this, go back to our player, choose our sprite and click this little A here. That means automatic, this is the default. Now, if we hit F5, you'll see that he is animated. Now we want to create a run animation. Let's go ahead and hit, uh, again, Alt F4 or whatever you use to close. And what we're going to do now is we are going to add a run animation. So again, choose our sprite here. Come over here to animation sprite frames. Click on this. Uh, and if it doesn't pop up, go to sprite frames. <laughs> we'll click new and we will rename this new animation to run. Now we will choose our little grid icon here, choose the same image as before. And uh, it should remember 16 by 16. If you've closed out Godot and come back in, it may not say that anymore. So make sure that's set to 16 by 16. Press control and scroll. And now we can choose our run animation. I'm gonna choose these three frames here. Run. Now, We've set it so he has a run animation, but now we need to do some coding. So let's go into our player, click on the little icon here to bring up the player script. 
And down here, these are the basic controls that were set. So here it's saying, okay, uh, if he's not on the floor, you know, add up uh, gravity. If uh, you press a certain key and he is on the floor, then basically make him go up. That's the jump. Check out uh, your left and right buttons. If they're pressed, then make them go in that direction at a certain speed. So we're going to change all that in a little bit. But for right now, let's come down here. Now, Godot script is indentation sensitive. So for example, if I was to come in here and put a tab there, I just broke the script. And we'll tell you right there with the red in some cases. So we have to make sure that our indentations are right. Um, but here, what we're going to do here is we're going to do an if statement. And if statement's going to check if something is true or false. Uh, so we're going to say if, and it will do auto completion for you. Uh, we're going to say velocity dot x. So velocity is how fast he's moving. X is left and right. Y is up and down. So we're saying if his velocity does not equal zero, which means he's moving, what are we going to do? Well, actually, let's go ahead and for right now, we're going to drag our sprite. Let's drag it over here, okay? And what we're going to do actually on here, we're going to say at on ready var sprite equals sprite. What do we do? So this dollar sign sprite is talking about the sprite over here in the tree. Uh, and we can use that in our script, but it's good to set a variable in case you move it somewhere in your tree. Now we have a variable. Anytime we say sprite, it's going to be talking about our image, right? Well, what we're going to do down here, we're going to say if he's not zero, so if he is moving, sprite.play, what are we going to play? The run animation. Okay? And again, indentation is important. Now we're going to say else colon. And let's say I forgot to put a colon there. And I start typing sprite dot play and this one I'll say default there we go I was waiting for it to give me an error it tells you right here okay error line 27 at character 9 we are expecting a colon after the else it tells you right there what the problem is if you don't understand it you can always google that or whatever search engine you want so now we're saying this is just saying if he's moving use the run animation if he's not then use the default animation We'll hit F5. Here we go. Now he's running. Now he's running, but he's running backwards. <laughs> so two things I would change here. One, we have to flip his animation. And I don't know if this looks jerky with, with the uh, screen recorder. He's, he's uh, moving smoothly, though. We need to flip his animation. I also want to speed up his run animation. So close this window with our sprite animation here. Uh, we'll go here. We'll go 2D. Uh, with our sprite selected, we'll come down here to animation. And what did I do wrong here? There we go. Had to click on, click off it and click back on it for some reason. Let's go ahead and take his run animation, right? And we have frames per second here set to five. Let's set that to 10. Now he'll run a little quicker. The animation, he won't move quicker. The animation will play quicker. Let's go back up to our script here. Now we're going to flip it. So we're going to say if, again, we're going to work with our velocity dot x, so his movement left, left and right. If it is less than zero, what are we going to do? We're going to say our sprite, our image, dot flip h for horizontal equals true. Got to spell true properly. Then we're going to say else sprite dot flip horizontal, so h, equals false. So what this is saying is, if he's moving in to the left, so if less than zero, flip the image. If not, flip it back. Don't flip it. You know, set it back to default. Now if I hit F5, we can move him this way, and we can move him that way. And I can hit spacebar to jump. So still things we need to do, uh, but I think this is a good stopping point for this first tutorial. I will have more in the future. I thank you for watching. Visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris of the Cage. Link in the description. As always, I hope that you have a great day.